The Wood Knight is sponsored by I Would Like. This video is sponsored by Sleeping Duck. Well, in the past for long rails, like on the side of a bed or on a dining table, I've used the crosscut slate on the table saw. Having a miter saw makes these really long cuts or really long pieces that need to be docked really easy. Um, and this has been a fantastic tool for us of late. So at the moment I need to cut the rails and the cap pieces for the rails that go on the side of the bed. So these need to be cleaned up on one end first, then I can measure it and cut it to a closer to rough, closer to final length. Uh, as you can see in a garage workshop, two meter lengths like this or 2.3 meter lengths like this take up a significant amount of space. So the lathes had to be moved out of the way and um, I've got additional support now. I cut both side rails to length at the same time and then both cap pieces at the same time. While a stop block would have worked in the situation I, at the time, I didn't have anywhere to actually put a stop. By cutting them at the same time clamped together, it doesn't really matter if they're a bit proud of the mark, they'll both be even. Once the cap pieces were cut to length, I could rip them with a slight bevel at the table saw. The offcut was used later on in the headboard. We actually bought the featherboard specifically for this project and for these long rips, it made things so much easier and safer. Because my blade was getting a bit worn, a little bit of cleanup with a hand plane was needed. For the headboard and footboard, I want the cap piece on both ends to be beveled so that it matches this angle here. That way it'll look uh, something like that and it'll have a nice continuation all the way around. Now that particular angle, I don't really care what that number is. So I'm just going to use a bevel gauge to copy that angle and take it to the miter saw. The side rails are pretty straightforward with the cap pieces just edge glued on. The easiest way I've found for glue ups on really long pieces like this is to tape the calls to the piece of work ahead of time. It helps distribute a bit of pressure but more importantly make sure you don't dent the wood, particularly on the top of the caps. With the side rails out of the way, I could turn my attention to the slats. For simplicity and cost, I ended up going with tongue groove flooring from Bunnings. It worked out cheaper both in dollars and in labour than if I had a board, a thicker board and had to resaw it. First I cut off the tongue, then the groove. I didn't bother cleaning up the grooves on the underside as it'll be completely hidden by the mattress. The miter saw let me cut five of the slats to length at once, much quicker than using the table saw. And since these were loose fitting parts anyway, small discrepancies in length were fine. For the supports that'll hold the slats up, I need three pieces. One on either side of the bed that'll get glued on, and a rail that'll sit in the middle between the headboard and footboard. So, so that the slats don't slide all around, I'm going to cut dados into it. So this is an offcut of my slat. It'll board will go like that, and it'll slot in like so about there. These aren't going to sit entirely flush with the surface, uh, just so that I don't have to remove as much material. 
I'm going to do all three at once out of one board and then rip them. That way I can guarantee they'll all line up and it'll just make it a little bit easier. It'll end up being less cuts overall for the dados. Now I've marked everything out, it might be a little hard to see, and I've put that on all surfaces because eventually I think I'm going to have to flip it so that I can uh, cut it on the table saw. So there are going to be 14 dados. Uh, I'm going to use my dado stack set to half inch on a contractor saw like this, like what I use. Uh, you will lose some power if you go too large and I've got all my clearance plates set up for half inch so it's a little bit easier just to go with that. Uh, and we're removing 75 mil of material. So at 12.7 mil or half inch, that should be six cuts per uh, slot, meaning that we only have 83 slots to do. Taking my time with the data stack gave me good results. And despite needing to do a crazy amount of cuts, it actually didn't take that long. Because it's an invisible surface, I didn't have to be perfect with the cuts and could just knock the excess out with a mallet. Then I could clean it up with chisel and block plane. Once it was all cleaned up, I could rip it into the three sections I needed. Once again, the featherboard paid for itself. The side slat supports will just get glued on, but the central rail needed to have a bracket to hold it up between the headboard and footboard. Using some scrap, I could rip and cross cut it to form a U shaped bracket. This might look like it isn't particularly strong because of the grain direction, but the brackets were glued onto the head and footboard, so it was important to go with the grain rather than against it. The two shorter pieces are really only there to index the central rail rather than supporting it. Right, so it's time to glue the slant support on. I've got both pieces here so I can glue them up at the same time, but also so I can orientate them in the correct direction. In case there's any difference with the dados, um, they need to be lined up. Uh, I've got these two supports, one on each end, to raise it up about 20 mil, and that's to compensate for the bracket that will go through the central wire. Uh, so now it's just a matter of pulling it on, uh, making sure it's 40 mil in from the rails so that I can get the brackets in. While I was at it, I could also glue the central rail bracket to the headboard and footboards. This is just aligned with the bottom of the head and footboards. 